I love this picture of the teacher. These are the rules we need to study in magnetism. It's like, what? Okay, so let's actually get into these. So we're going to look at the equations uh, for moving charges in magnetic fields. So first of all, what happens if you have just a charge that's moving in a magnetic field, like a little electron or a proton or just a single charge that's entering some kind of magnetic field? Well, we've learned before with the hand rules, it's going to curve somehow. So either down or up or out of the page or into the page, depending on the situation here. Uh, okay, but we actually have an equation for it. So this is actually really nice. We can actually quantify some numbers here. We say F equals QVB times the sine of theta. Okay, so what kind of variables do we have? Well, F is the force on the charge, so that's going to be in Newtons. Q is the charge, that'll be in Coulombs. V is the speed of the charge, like how fast it's actually moving, so that'll be in meters per second. Magnetic field strength, remember, is in Tesla. And then the angle between B and V, that's going to be an angle in degrees. Now, interestingly enough, though, what happens if B and V are perpendicular? What happens then? Well, then theta is just going to be 90 degrees. And if you remember uh, from math, uh, what is the sine of 90 degrees? Well, sine of 90 degrees is just 1. So that's why, uh, in that case then, you can say, hey, and therefore, if so if these are perpendicular, we can say that just it's just F equals QVB, and you can just forget about the sine theta, right? because it just becomes a 1. So that makes things a lot easier, and very often that is the case. So most of the time, this right here will be the case, at least on exams. So we just looked at if we had a charge in a magnetic field, what if there's a wire in a magnetic field? We have an equation for that as well. So that equation goes like this. It just goes uh, F equals, and this time it's BIL, or I like to say BIL. So we can say BIL sine theta, of course. Okay, so again, uh, well, F is going to be the force on the wire. That's in Newton's magnetic field strength is going to be in uh, Tesla. Current current is measured in amperes, length of the wire, that's going to be in meters, and then theta will be the angle between B and I, that'll be in degrees. So it'll be just that easy, and again, uh, watch out, if they're perpendicular, same sort of thing holds true, if they're perpendicular, sine of 90 degrees will be 1, so then it'll just be F equals Bill. So one way to put this all into context, at least, I thought maybe a fun fact, uh, anti-submarine. Uh, so, for example, airplanes, that their job is to fly around and look for submarines. This, for example, is the Canadian CP-140 Aurora. Uh, Canada has these, and they fly around uh, looking for slash listening for submarines. So these are these, you know, big, uh, obviously it's not drawn to scale here. But uh, planes, you can tell a, uh, an anti-submarine plane based on this, you know, big thing sticking out the back, although now they have some well, it's on the top, but the idea is still the same. We have a MAD boom or a magnetic anomaly detector. And the idea here is as you fly over the ocean, you're just measuring the Earth's magnetic field. You basically measure it, you know, with some, you know, devices, something like this. And that means if you fly over the ocean and, you know, you're flying pretty low and all of a sudden you detect a fluctuation, a a difference in the Earth's magnetic field, then that tells you there's likely something underneath you that's altering the Earth's magnetic field. You know, something that's actually causing this, you know, fluctuation. And that's usually a submarine. There we go. Okay, so instead of talking about submarines, let's do a real kind of example that you might have on an exam. So you have a wire with current I running through it, and it's in a magnetic field B that is perpendicular to the wire, and it feels a force, F. Before doing anything else, then, I can already recognize what I'm going to do is F equals BIL. And by the way, because it's perpendicular, what does that mean? That means theta is going to be 90 degrees. That means sine theta is just equal to 1. Well, what does that mean then? Well, that means then um, when I use this equation right here, I've got this equation F equals BIL is what I can use. I don't have to worry about the sine theta. So that's the main equation I'm going to use. Now, I'm just going to write out, for example, the first uh, equation. I always, when I see these kind of questions, I like to call these ratios questions. These are kind of questions where you have a setup, you have some kind of situation, and then you're asked what happens if it's doubles or triples or whatever. And if that's the case, I deal with them all in the same way. I deal with ratios questions by just writing an equation, the old or original, that's this one, and then I write a new one. So I'll say F2. Now, see, now let's see what happens. They tell us, uh, okay, same wire. If the current is changed to I over, uh, I over 8, magnetic field strength is 16B. So that means instead of B, I'm going to say 16B. All right, and instead of I, what do I say? I'm going to say I over 8. 
Okay. Um, and after that, I'm going to say, oh, what do I do for L? Can you see it? It's the same wire, isn't it? Because of that right there, the L's are going to be equal. So that means uh, I can just keep it as L. Okay, let's maybe fix up this equation here for F2, this new force. It's going to be, let's see, 16 over A is just a 2. So I could say it's 2BIL. Okay, and that means if I'm going to solve this then I like to just use a ratio. I do this divided by this equation. I do like new over old. So in this case right here then, let's see, I'm going to do, um, I'll just write it all out. Those who have seen a lot of these and done a lot of these, you'll skip some steps here. But I'm just showing you if you really want to be careful here, it would go like this. Oops, I forgot the F equals. Um, so this one here is how it would look like this. Whoops. So F2 over F equals 2BIL over BIL. And what can I do then with these? Well, do you notice then their stuff cancels out? Look, the bills cancel out. So those who are used to these won't even bother writing those, but I just did. So there we go. So I got F2 over F then just equals 2. What does that mean? That means, therefore, if I want to get F2 by itself, what do I do? I multiply both sides by F, so the F comes to the top. And I can say F2 equals 2F. In other words, the new force is twice what the old force was. There we go.